Today, the best gaming CPU was just overclocked. We're going to need new GPUs with this. NVIDIA accidentally leaked their own GPU, and Ryzen 8000 is set to be amazing. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it looks like the newly released Ryzen 7800X3D has already been overclocked. That may sound odd given the CPU doesn't technically support overclocking, but there's a way around this. The story comes from Asus's overclocker Scatterbencher, who recently published this video where he went over the process. Basically, what he did was to use the external clock generators on the ROG Crosshair X670E Hero. He used it with the Curve Optimizer to get a 5.4 GHz boost clock on a single core with 4.8 GHz all core, and he did it with voltages far under 1.2 volts, so a very impressive feat. This led to a very nice increase in performance with multi-threaded workloads. Not only that, but he was able to push it to 5.6 GHz with just water cooling, though I will say that at 5.6 it likely wasn't that stable because it was getting pretty close to 1.2 volts, and he mentioned that anything over 1.15 volts isn't that usable for daily use. Either way, the 7800X3D is already an amazing deal, and seeing it overclocked makes it look even better. Today's video is sponsored by Power Color. Hey man, are you, uh, uh what are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing, I just, uh, just don't like the backplay, uh, never mind. We've all been there. You just got your brand new awesome GPU, but there's something missing. Your backplate is meh, so you try to glue paper to it. Well, stop it. Paper won't work. Customize your GPU's backplate the right way with PowerColor's new Devil Skins made for their Red Devil 7900 series of GPUs. You can easily swap out your backplate for something fresh. And you can do it in seconds because they're attached with magnets. So you switch them back and forth as much as you'd like. And let's be honest, they look awesome. My favorite has to be this one. But if I'm being honest, they all look pretty sweet. Not to mention the fact that I've had multiple Red Devil cards over the years and they are seriously impressive. To get your backplate or GPU, check out the link in the description below. Next up for today, NVIDIA recently released a new video that showcases the upcoming overdrive mode in Cyberpunk 2077. Remember that I discussed this overdrive mode a little while back. It looks to be one of the first games with NVIDIA's new path tracing tech, which as I mentioned is sort of like ray tracing turned to the max. It's a bit more complicated than that, but as NVIDIA mentions in the video, path tracing, or what they call full ray tracing, quote, models all properties of light from an unlimited number of emission sources. That ultimately means even more realistic scenes. The issue is that path tracing is set to be extremely demanding, and in this demo, that becomes very clear. During it, NVIDIA showcases the kind of performance you can get with their new DLSS3 tech. And it is definitely impressive, but also sort of sad, because as you can see right here, using an RTX 4090 without DLSS on, the performance is terrible. It literally gets as low as 16 FPS, and you heard that right, a 4090. Now with DLSS3 turned on, it gets a huge boost, but it certainly seems like we're back to the early days of ray tracing where we essentially need DLSS for the games to even be playable. Even though Nvidia's upscaling tech has gotten significantly better, over the years, it's still nice to be able to play at native resolution so you don't have to worry about any kind of weird artifacting or anything like that. At the end of the day though, it looks like path tracing is set to cripple even the fastest of GPUs. Next up, while sticking to NVIDIA, it looks like they accidentally leaked one of their own GPUs. That's right, in a new story from The Verge, NVIDIA discussed the fact that Counter-Strike 2 is set to come with support for their Reflex technology, which you likely know is the company's tech that's aimed at reducing latency in games, and that's obviously really important in competitive shooters like Counter-Strike. Well, NVIDIA actually shared this slide that goes over benchmarks showing the latency reduction you can expect in the game. And as you can see right here, they actually list the RTX 4070. Now, if you've been following this channel, to which I would definitely appreciate the sub if you aren't, but for those who are, you already know that the 4070 is set to be released very soon. I'm talking days away with the latest leak showing April 13th. We've also seen specs leak, and according to those, it's set to come with 5,888 
cores, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 X memory, a 200 watt TGP, and coming in at $599. But of course, those are leaks, and this is an official slide from the company, so it further confirms what we've been hearing. When it comes to the slide itself, you can see that it shows only a slight reduction in latency with the 4070, just because it already has very low latency. But as we move to older, lower end cards, the reduction becomes far more important with the GTX 1060 getting a huge drop. According to the report, Reflex will be supported on the GTX 900 series cards and newer. And lastly for today, we have a really interesting story on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 8000 CPUs. The story originally comes from an event by Tens Torrent, and the current CEO of the company is Jim Keller, who for those that don't know, was a leading chip architect in AMD's Zen architecture, and almost certainly had a big role in laying out the plans for future architectures. Keep that in mind because at the event, Tens Torrent shared this slide, which goes over integer performance between different architectures. And as you can see, it actually lists Zen 5, which is the architecture in AMD's next-gen Ryzen 8000. Now, this is a test that's mostly for servers, but integer calculations are one of the most important ones done by a CPU. Plus, it's a single-core benchmark, so the only difference is going to be from the architecture. This is basically IPC and clock increases, not performance from an increase in core count. So when we look at performance, we see that from Zen 3 to Zen 4, think Ryzen 5000 to 7000, it got a performance increase of 15%. But when we look at Zen 4 to Zen 5, it's double that at 30%, meaning next gen could see a huge performance jump over last gen. And the recent leak we saw from Red Gaming Tech claimed a really big IPC increase as well. So this is looking pretty accurate. With that said, keep in mind that these are estimates. They didn't personally test a Zen 5 processor, but those estimates are likely very close given once again, the man who helped lead the Zen architecture is the CEO of this company. So he would definitely have have a good idea where AMD is going. Basically, next gen Ryzen is looking really exciting. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen CPUs, or are you just waiting for NVIDIA's RTX 4070? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out PowerColor's new backplates in the description below. And as always, have a great day!